In this problem, there are four forces acting on a ring, and the ring is in equilibrium. And、uh, we need to determine the magnitudes of forces F three and F four.、Uh, the magnitudes of force F one and F two are given, and the directions of all four forces are given. So we're going to apply Newton's first law for this problem. We have forces as two D vectors. So according to Newton's first law, resultant force as a vector equals to zero. And because we already established the x y、uh, rectangular coordinate system or the x y Cartesian coordinate system, we can resolve the forces into their x and y components respectively, and then rewrite this vector equation into two scalar equations that the resultant force along the x direction equals to zero, and resultant force along the y direction equals to zero. So we have two scalar equations that will enable us to solve for two scalar unknowns. So now let's resolve the forces into x y components. The first one we have is F one. Because of the direction,、uh, we can see that the x component for F one is along the negative x direction, and the magnitude will be F one times cosine fifty five degree. And its y component is along the positive y direction, and the、uh, magnitude will be two hundred and twenty times sine forty fifty five degree. So, for our first equation, resultant force along the x direction equals to negative two two hundred and twenty times cosine fifty five degree. And then resultant force along the y direction equals to two hundred and twenty times sine fifty five degree. Moving on to force two. For force two, its x component is along the positive x direction, and the magnitude we can move it here, and the magnitude equals to f two times cosine of this angle right here. So if this angle is a hundred and ten degree, then this angle will be a hundred and eighty minus a hundred and ten to be seventy degree. Therefore, the x component of F two equals to one hundred and fifty times cosine seventy degree,、uh, pointing towards the positive x direction. Therefore, that will be positive. So plus. 150 times positive cosine 70 degree, and its y component, it's pointing towards positive y direction. The magnitude will be 150 times sine 70 degree. And then moving on to force F3. Even though the magnitude of F three is not given, the direction is given. F three is along the positive x direction, which means that it does not have any vertical component along the y direction. Therefore, simply, we have F three here, and F three does not contribute to our second equation summarizing the forces along the y direction. Then we move on to F four. So F four has a component, x component that points to the negative x direction. You can move it here. This component right here, in magnitude equals to、uh, magnitude of F four times cosine sixty degree. So that will be minus F four times cosine sixty degree. And then this force right here also has a y component in this direction, pointing towards negative y, and that in magnitude equals to sorry negative because it's pointing downwards towards the negative y direction, so that in magnitude equals to negative f four times sine sixty degree. So now. We have resolved 
all four forces into their x and y components respectively and then we added all the x components together and we added all the y components together and because the ring is in equilibrium that means that according to newton's first law resultant force along the x direction equals to zero resultant force along the y direction equals to zero as well so we have two scalar equations and we have two scalar unknowns f3 and f4 magnitudes therefore we can solve both of these two unknowns we probably want to start with equation 2 because equation 2 only has one unknown f4 so from equation 2 we can solve for f4 to be 371 newton and then we substitute f4 into the first equation to solve for f3 and f3 equals to 260 newton so that's the answer for this problem.